Dear fellow redeemed, I had just gotten home, and it was about supper time, and um, our, our five-year-old Joel, he's standing there, and he tells me what he learned today. And they had been, had been doing some English and um, looking at letters, and he, they learned the letter A and T, because he's working on the beginning portions of reading. A, like A, like apple, and then T makes the T sound. So as we're heating supper up and getting that ready, we take turns and just kind of engage in this fun little game with a five-year-old. Tornado. T -t -t Taco. Kind of take turns saying all these T words, whatever comes to mind, you know, like Tennessee or Titan or Titanic. And then we sit down to eat and we, we say our prayers and just about as I'm about to cut into my enchilada, um, Joel looks up and he says, T -t -t Tornado. Dad, does God cause tornadoes? Does God cause tornadoes? And the answer, you know, the short answer, <laughs> I'm like, I haven't had anything to eat, to eat since lunch. <laughs> The short answer, uh, yes and no, but it's okay because God's still in control. And he kept asking, as well he should have, and, uh, and the, the three or four of us engaged in the conversation, and Desiree did a very good job um, distilling, distilling one of the more marvelous and difficult to understand truths down into words that a toddler can understand. Does God cause tornadoes? Or put it another way, when we pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What exactly are we praying for? Because you might say to yourself, Well, um, I know what God's will is, and, and I'm just praying that God will take care of things. Right? But that question of, does God cause tornadoes, keeps popping up. And maybe it's phrased a little bit differently in your life. Does God cause cancer, arthritis? Is God to blame when, when there's starving people on the other side of the world, and doesn't God care about them? What about that hurricane? Is God to blame for that? And surely, surely we can't say that God is totally hands-off and disconcerned. Because we know that God is actively involved in his creation. That's something we talked about even, um, even two weeks ago and last week. That God is actively involved in his creation. That our God who is present everywhere is always active wherever he is present. And so on the one hand we cannot say that God has no part in hurricanes and tornadoes. But that leads us to the second question, or the second part of that question. That if we know God is involved in hurricanes and tornadoes, that God is still present and ruling when there are cancer and car crashes, then why do these things happen? Especially to, you know, these seemingly innocent, innocent people, like, you know, the, the little children that we see on TV. Innocent people who were just driving on their way to work until they were T-boned and put in the hospital. Innocent people who they themselves had done nothing wrong but through, through the actions of others are now having to deal with all the fallout of life in a sinful world. And the question, that question, does God cause t -t tornadoes? kind of echoes with us. What is God's role? And when we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what is it that we're praying for? Now obviously the, the first starting point is, what is this question of will? Like free will. Do, do people have free will? Um, and, and the answer is twofold. Well, absolutely not. You have no free will in spiritual matters. 
that you didn't decide to become a Christian, even if you decided on one particular day to finally walk through the church doors of church. You did not decide to become a Christian. And together with that, together with that, you cannot maintain yourself in the faith after you have cut yourself off from the Word of God. That somebody, you know, maybe has these ideas that he or she is a Christian just looking at my life or, or maybe that it doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, since we have no free will in spiritual matters to become a Christian, we do not have the power within ourselves to remain a Christian either. So I guess that's the first point, that there is no free will in spiritual things. But secondly, secondly, you woke up this day and you decided how you wanted your hair to look and what style of glasses you wanted to wear and, and what, uh, what outfit you wanted to wear today. You have oodles of free will. And we hold on to these truths. You have free will in, in all of these worldly and external things. What do I want to do for my career, for my job, for my occupation? Who is it that I would like to date or not date? Who is it that I would like to marry or, or not marry? Where is it that I would like to live? Even what church do I want to attend if there are multiple in the area? How do I, how do I set up a household budget? All of these things. Whether I want to drive a, a Prius or a Camaro. <laughs> Neither of the above in my case. You've got all sorts of free will. And that, that kind of gets back to the main thing we're talking about. What is God's will? Is it God's will that tornadoes hit this world? Was it God's will that you have to look at your life and say, well, God has just laid out this plan for me and it's up to me to just live my life and, and I'm just going to fret here and wring my hands trying to figure out what is the will of God in, the, in my life, in this particular situation? What is God's will? Wondering and wondering, am I doing the right thing? And to the Christian who wonders if he or she is making the right choice, whether it's the, the college that you want to attend, whether it's um, the life that you want to have with this person or, or maybe move on and date somebody else, God has given incredible free will there and it is truly free. God isn't like the, the, the fates of Greek mythology, which if, um, if you remember the, the Disney movie Hercules, <laughs> like the best version of Hercules, the Disney movie Hercules, there's these three fates who are like spinning out a thread. And then they try to cut the thread of Hercules' life to end his life. Their idea was that God had set up, that the gods in their case, that the gods had set up and decreed everything that would happen in their lives, in every single point. And it was just up to, um, up to the person to live it. So if something good happened, that was the fates, and that was the gods. If something bad happened, that was the fates, and that was the gods. And there is no personal accountability. But the Christian, the Christian knows that God has given you tremendous free will in all of these external things. Even all the choices that you might make in your life. Because our God, who knows all things, knows what was and is and will be, as well as what could have been, could have been in the present and will be as a result of all of those choices. This is the God who, among all of his gifts, in a very general way, he has committed into your hands the gift of choice, just not in spiritual matter. And so we know that, number one, you have choice in, in matters, and that you have some freedom of will. So then why do we pray, thy will be done? Because at the exact same time, when you have very real freedom, God in his goodness has known from eternity and has chosen for you. Both things are true. That God from eternity has known what day you would be born. Has known the people that you would meet and the people that you would miss. God from eternity has known the choices that you would make because at the same time he has chosen them for you. And, and it's, it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but th both things are true. When we talk about the will of God, you have this absolute freedom at the same time 
God has plotted out and planned out and promised to bless every step of your life. And it really comes down to an understanding of time, where you and I are time-bound creatures and God himself is not. So if we look at it from, from God's perspective up here, then we see things must be as they have happened. But if we see them from our perspective down here, we see all the variety of choices and all the options and what it is that we chose and what it is that we didn't choose and actual freedom at the same time as God has promised to bless you through the choices that he has made for you. And so we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have freedom, not in spiritual matters. God has promised that his will will be done. So why do we pray this? If God's will is going to happen, no matter what, if God has already decided and chosen from eternity those who will come to faith in him, then why do we do anything? The answer, of course, is that God is a means of grace God. That he accomplishes his best work through tools. Like word and sacrament, for one. He accomplishes spiritual resurrection and conversion. Takes people from, from hell and the devil's domain. Makes them citizens of heaven. God accomplishes his best work through tools, through the means. He's a means of grace God. And God accomplishes that same good work in your life and mine through you. That God's eternal will is accomplished as you live your life to the glory of God. In the choices that you make and as you weigh your decisions, God promises to bless that and to turn every misfortune, every, every crime committed against you, every sin, every stumbling, every success, God promises to turn all of them into a blessing for you and for me. Because that is God's will. And we don't have to sit here wringing our hands trying to figure out what is it that God really wants me to do? What's the, what's the plan in all this? What's God's will in all this? You no, know, the Christian can confidently say, you know, the, God's eternal will is in the hands of our God. But it's up to me to look at and consider my own, my own time, my own talents, my own resources, my own life, and consider for myself, how can I bring glory to God and move his will one step closer to completion? Because you understand that God's will is pretty clearly laid out in Scripture, called the Ten Commandments, where God tells us what he would have us do and be and what he would have us not do and not be. He tells us right there. Does God cause tornadoes? Does God cause sin? Does God cause bad things to happen? Well, it is not his will that people should suffer. And it is not God's will that, that children should be starving in, in our country or another country. It is not God's will that anybody would be lost to hell. It is not God's will that believers would fall prey to the lies of this world and get their faith swept away like sand in a storm. It is not God's will that people would die from cancer or suffer abuse at the hands of others. It is not God's will for these things to happen. But it's the lingering question, why do they? Because we live in a sinful world. And our means of grace, God has chosen to act through people. Rather than just zap the earth with a, a, a wand of perfection. Our means of grace, God has chosen to act through you and through me. First of all, by giving you spiritual life through his word. And he has chosen to act through medical means, like, like medicine and chemotherapy. He's chosen to act through things like seatbelts and airbags to keep you alive. Because God's will is accomplished as God's people make wise decisions in their lives. As God's people make wise decisions in their lives and saying, what is a, what's a logical course of action here? <laughs> but it's still that lingering question. 
this guy caused tornadoes. And you can fill in the blank with something from your own life, no doubt. Does God cause heart attacks? Does God cause... You name it. It is not God's will that people will be injured by the sins of others. It is not God's will that people would die at a young age or even at an older age. It is not God's will that governments would be oppressive or, or starve their people. So where is God in all this? Let's not point the finger at God for the sins of people. But we see where is God in all this? It was God's will to join us in our suffering. Where God could have just crumpled up the earth and thrown it away. But it is God's will that he doesn't want anybody to be lost. He wants all to be saved. And rather than crumpling up the world before, before his believers were brought to faith, before his people were brought to faith, God decided to join us in the pain of this world. And God decided to walk the earth in the pain and the dust of this world. God decided to be caught up in a storm multiple times on the Sea of Galilee. He chose to, to be born into a family of, of rather little means from all that we understand. God chose to be born in a stable and placed in a manger when he had every right to the most beautiful of the king's palaces. God chose to stand at the grave of his friend and weep because he knows your pain and he came to do something about it. God chose to pick up your sorrows and to carry them on his back. God chose to go through death before you or I ever have and to undo the power of sin in this world to make you, make you sure and certain that your sin has been forgiven and that you've been given a new life with this God who shares in our suffering. God chose even that, uh, that image Monday, Thursday evening in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus bows his head and prays, not my will, but your will be done. Perfect example of the most difficult prayer in the entire Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we live, we live in a world of tornadoes. We live in a world of, of slanderous accusations. We live in a world of sin and death and pain and loss. We live in a world of disease. We live in a world where people will shut their ears to the word of God and charge on ahead with their slander. But God is not distant from this world. And so we pray, thy will be done. And he promises through that prayer to continue to frustrate the plans of the devil and to continue to turn every downturn of your life into a blessing for you. And you might not see that still on this side of heaven, but you will when you do get to heaven. God promises to turn even the, the most painful of circumstances into something where at the end of time and when you're in eternity, you'll be able to look back and say, wow, this is what my God has promised for me, where he has promised to turn even, even somebody's sin against me into a blessing for me. How great is our God. Hallowed be his name. His kingdom come. There is his will right there. And when we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're praying, Lord, let me participate in your will. Give me the words. Give me the opportunity. Give me the backbone. Give me the, the courage to hold on to your word, to speak up about your will and your goodness in all situations. But most of all, Lord, give me the understanding that your goodness in my life is not based on the circumstances that I go through or I don't experience. That your goodness toward me isn't based on my perception, my thoughts, my feelings about the matter. Lord, thy will be done. We bow our heads and we pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Teach me. Teach me that your good and gracious will is accomplished. And Lord, continue to frustrate the plans of the devil and those against me. And we pray, when we pray, Thy will be done, 
It's really a prayer that says, you know what? God is God. And I'm not. And it's a prayer that takes our eyes off of whatever it is that is a tornado in your life. It takes our eyes off the t -t tornado, the disease, the car crash, the fill in the blank. It takes our eyes back to the, the clear words of Scripture where God describes his goodness toward you and me. Where he says that his will for you is nothing but good things. Even if that means some bit of temporary pain. Because when we pray, thy will be done. It's not a prayer that says, Lord, tell me, tell me when you're going to accomplish this. Tell me how you're going to fix my situation. That is not the case. Tell me what you're going to do. We're not praying that either. What we're really praying is, Lord, tell me who. Tell me who holds my future and my life in his hands. Lord, your will and not mine. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.